Hey guys, what's up, Zyflin here, and in today's video, I'm going to be teaching you guys how you can get the meta weapons in the game. Now, what are the meta weapons in Warframe right now? Most of the go-to weapons are weapons known as Incarnan weapons, and these are basically weapons that can have really strong upgrades. So here is an Incarnan weapon known as the Ladum, and if we hover over to the right here, as I have it equipped, we can see that the fifth upgrade for the incarnate mode of this weapon is called devouring attrition and this gives 50 percent chance to deal plus 2000 damage now there are a lot of other benefits such as more status chance and less critical chance in this upgrade but that's to you know benefit this fifth upgrade and then you know there's more uh, reload speed on headshot you know different tiny buffs here and there which make these weapons just a cut above the rest right and you might have heard that there's some older weapons in the game such as the Torrid, for example which also have have incarnate versions which take them from being pretty bad weapons to some of the best weapons in the game because it also changes up how these weapons actually shoot so instead of being a sort of like bomb launcher because this thing shoots out balls that lets out gas or toxin what it does is it turns it into a beam weapon which just absolutely shreds enemies and has crazy upgrades as well. So we have uh, increased damage by 51, more multi-shot on the last shot in the magazine, more projectile speed, so then we just shoot faster and increase critical chance by 20%, which is a pretty good upgrade, right? So these incarnate forms or incarnate weapons take some of the worst weapons in the game and turn them into some of the best weapons in the game, the Torb being the number one example. So how do we actually get them? So over here we have a vendor called Cavaliero. Now to get to this area you have to complete the Angels of Desarmament quest which you can access after you completed the new war. I've got other videos on my channel teaching you guys how to get new war ready. So if you want to go ahead and check those out, those will benefit you greatly to get to this area. So once you complete the Angels of Desarmament quest you'll be able to talk to this vendor here called Cavaliero. And if you press browse wares, you can trade in the standing that you get from here. So you do the bounties in this area. You get a resource known as void plumes. You trade those in for standing. And then you can trade the standing in for the Latum, the Anudum, the Fenmore, the Felarks, and also the Prados. So these are all incarnate weapons here, which you can get quite early. So you can actually get the Latum at rank zero with uh, this uh, sort of syndicate here. And then you can get this quite early as well. So these are basically some of the best weapons in the game just from a a faction you know what i mean so you come in here you spend the the standing and then you can take them you can do challenges to upgrade them and then once you do the challenges you can choose whichever upgrades you want so if i go back and i go to evolve incarnate weapons sorry yeah evolve incarnate weapons and then i press the latum for example again I can actually go and I can change the upgrades, right? So on the Evolution 2, I can say less weapon recoil, or I can say more movement speed when aiming, or fire rate, you know, that other type of thing. So you can make these weapons your own, basically, and make fancy builds and stuff like that. There is sort of, like, go-to upgrades, etc. But uh, those are some of the best weapons in the game, and they will enable you to do so much content, such as the new Elite Deep Archimedia game mode, Archon Hunts, it just makes them so easy. So uh, that is that. That's how you get the base Incarnum weapons. So those are Incarnum weapons that are Incarnum from the get-go. So the Latum is always going to be Incarnum. You don't need to throw an Incarnum adapter on. But to make the Torrid Incarnum, for example, well, how do we actually do that? To do that, we have to go back to our navigation and take a look at the Steel Path circuit. So if you're coming back to Warframe after a big breakaway, you have to come to your codex and you have to go to quests and you have to type in the, the Viri Paradox. Now you want to go ahead and complete this quest. And then once you've got that quest completed, the next thing that you want to do is you want to complete basically every other main story quest to unlock all of the hub areas. So you can see I have Zarman over here. I've got Lua over here, the Kuva Fortress. And if we zoom into Deimos, I've got an extra area down here as well. And basically these are just new planets, right? With new missions attached to them. You have to complete every single mission to unlock the Steel Path. So once you've completed every single mission in the star chart, and you've also completed the Daviri Paradox quest, you'll be able to come up here, press this face icon, it might be a different color for you, and then press the circuit. But you wanna make sure on this right hand side that you have the steel path mode enabled and if you have the steel path mode enabled what's going to happen is it's going to bring up a menu where it shows you these different uh, incarnate weapons or incarnate adapters and you can choose two of them so you can see this week I actually chose the Lex and the Bronco so the 
in Karnan's Steel Path or the Steel Path circuit is basically what is going to reward you with these Incarnate adapters, which you can apply to the older weapons in the game. And you can only get two per week. Now, this is a very time consuming game mode. Basically, what happens is you start it up. So we're going to go into the mission here. And what's going to happen is you're going to have a random selection of Warframes to choose from. So I quite like Titania in this game mode. So I'm just going to go ahead, uh, check my build for her. So if I can press the button so I can see my build, I can swap through my different builds and stuff. And then I can just go ahead and equip and that's my Titania. And then I've got a random choice of weapons here. So the Nagant attack is pretty nice. I'm just going to go ahead and take that as an example. Uh, we've got the Venka Prime, which is quite good. And then we've also got, I don't know, the, the Twinger Cat is right. So that would be my loadout for the circuit. And once you go for that portal, it's going to start the circuit. The circuit is basically just a bunch of game modes, uh, one after the other. So you've got the likes of survival, exterminate, defense, void flood, all that there type of stuff. And you just complete mission after mission after mission. And the longer you stay, the more circuit progress you get. And the more circuit progress you get, the closer you get to getting an incarnate adapter. So it's basically just normal Warframe, except with a random loadout. So you might not always get the best stuff, that's okay, just complete a mission or two and then come out, you get your progress towards the next uh, tier and then you can choose a different loadout, right? Pretty easy. So I would recommend staying until, you know, you complete the first assassination and then backing out. That's a pretty easy way to do it. And that way you'll be making good progress each run. Like I said, it is quite time consuming. It can take you anywhere between like two to two and a half hours to get to rank 10. So the first incarnate adapter that you choose for the week is going to be the one that you get uh, at rank five whenever you're progressing through the circuit, right? The other thing to keep in mind is that you're going to need resources from the Viri. So whenever you load into this area over here, there's going to be a bunch of plants. If you go over to them, they will drop. And then I've just got a bunch of resources, which I'm going to need to apply to my incarnate adapters or by weapons that I want to put an incarnate adapter on. So what I've done is I've came back to Cavalier just to show you guys what I mean with installing the incarnate adapter onto the weapon. So here I've got the Prisma Angstrom. This is a weapon that I want to put my incarnate adapter on and it says that I need the Angstrom Incarnate Genesis. So that is the adapter which I'm applying to the Prisma Angstrom here. I need 20 Pathos Clamps. I need UMAG, which again is just a resource from the Viri, and 80 Lamentus. Again, that is just a resource from the Viri. So, what I want to do is I want to go and play the Viri game mode, and I want to run around, kill some enemies, destroy some plants and rocks and stuff like that, and I'll get my resources that I need. But then the big one is the Pathos Clamps. Now, the Pathos Clamps you get from the in the boss in the Viri, and I'm going to show you guys how to do that in today's video. So what you want to do is again come to navigation, press on the face and then just go ahead and press the Daviri experience. So again you get thrown into this area where you get to choose your frame and your weapons. I'm going to go ahead and stick with Titania. I've got my loadout here so I'm using the Shidu, the Twinger Katas and the Venka Prime. And then another thing I can do is I can go ahead and spend a decree. Now the reason that I can spend a decree right now is because I've invested into opportunity in my intrinsics. So I'm just going to go ahead and use persistent attrition because why not? And you can upgrade your intrinsics over here at this little like fireplace rotating gold thing. So just go ahead and press that. And then if you've got intrinsics, you'll see at the top right, and then you can see how much you got to spend to upgrade. So for the sake of like playing the circuit and also the Viri, go ahead and throw your points into opportunity. Then once you've got a decent amount of points and that, just go ahead and invest into combat endurance and maybe riding. It's really down to you. Just pick whatever upgrade sounds uh, good to you. Then we go through this portal and that spawns us right into the Viri. Now again, what you want to be doing is you want to go ahead and be destroying plants and stuff like that. So I just got Kovnik there. So just keep on looking around and stuff like that for, you know, glowing plants. If you get on your horse and you fly into the air, you take a little look around, see anything that has this sort of glow to it, that's going to be a resource which you can go ahead and break. So here's more Kovnik, get on my horse again, jump into the air and uh, look, there's more over there. So just go from point to point to point and just uh, destroy these, um, these flyers and rocks and stuff like that to get more of a resource. Some of them only spawn in caves, so pay attention whenever you're in caves as well. And then there's some that are a little bit more sneaky, like this one over here. So we just go ahead, get that, and we got some aggro stones. So you will be able to get uh, those from, you know, little flyer pickups that you've seen in the circuit cave. So just make sure to pick those up every single time you go in as well. And I'll try to land on this rock. And what you want to do 
is just complete uh, six objectives so we can spawn in the Aura Worm boss and get our Pathos Clumps. So once you've completed the sixth objective, what's going to happen is the game is going to tell you to summon the Aura Worm. And whenever you summon the Aura Worm, you're going to get this disc weapon. Now, once the Aura Worm is in the sky, you get onto your horse with the disc weapon in your hand. And you want to get close enough to the worm by throwing the disc through these balls that he's shooting at you. And then go ahead and press left click when you get close enough and it lights up. And you want to jump to reach these discs. Now, the reason that these discs are here, these here things right here that I'm going to start turning, is because I'm playing on steel path mode. And we want to keep on turning these until they glow gold like that. And then we jump and we keep going. Like so. We just keep on jumping, keep on left clicking until we get close. And of course, we want to jump over the big wave thing that he's shooting at us. And we do the same thing again. We just turn it until it glows gold and then we want to get to his head so you get as close as you can then press transference so mine's this tab and that's going to put us inside him so i have to turn the discs because i'm playing in steel path mode if you're not playing in steel path mode you won't have to turn those discs you're just going to have to get to the tip of his head and then transference inside of him and then what you want to do is you want to destroy these tires within the time limit so you can see that timer at the bottom of the screen there no big deal, you should be able to do it quick enough. You move quite quite quickly, or fast enough at least. Very good. And now you want to go into this portal. So once you get through the portal, you're basically on the boss fight, and all you got to do is shoot the rings that are on the worm. So because I'm Titania, this is quite easy. Of course, it might take you a little bit longer, depending on the weapons that you've got and stuff like that. But uh, he's down on the floor now, and that's going to start phase two. Now, mines is going to be more complicated than yours so as you can see like the floor is glowing blue for me and basically what you'd have to do if you're not playing titania is get on a horse in the middle and then you want to fly around on your horse if i can live here fly around on your horse while shooting these worm enemies so because i had a heat proc on me i actually ended up dying while in my titania is four so here's the horse gameplay you just want to go around and uh you know get the the worm in front of you behind you whatever and then just aim at him Press the left click like so and he's dead Then once that final one is dead you want to go back into the middle land your horse down and wait for the worm to allow you to use your frame again i just go back into my fairy form and just go ahead and uh, shoot the rings again very easy like so need to let my ammo reload a little bit and there are going to be some enemies that spawn around now. Once you've killed all the enemies that are around, you just go ahead and shoot the rings for a final time, like so. And there you go, that's basically it done. I'm going to go ahead and open up this chest, and you can see that for that steel path run, we got 15 pathos clamps. Now, in normal mode, you're only going to get 10, and the boss fight is going to be way less complicated than that. Like, you're just going to have to kill some, some enemies and then shoot the rings. You don't actually have to, like, attach yourself to the worm and turn some things. You just have to get into the worm, transference in, shoot the tires, and then shoot the worm, kill some bad guys, shoot the rings again. And that's basically it. But in the steel path mode, you got to do the, the horse bit. You got to turn the rings, all of their good stuff. And uh, that's basically it. You go for this portal and that's you. You just got your pathos clumps. So in plan, you've got enough resources. You'd be able to come to Cavaliero and apply an incarnate adapter to the weapon of your choice. So if you got one for the bolt door, you'd be able to put it on the Telos bolt door or the bolt door prime. The prime weapons are usually better than the other versions. But in this case, because we only have the choice between the angstrom and the prisma angstrom, if I were to have five more pathos clumps, which I don't right now, I'd be able to put the incarnate adapter on and then I'd have to do the challenges that it tells me to do to upgrade to the next evolution, right? So it says evolution one. It says use Incarnate Genesis on the weapon to access its evolution. So it'd just be a matter of me activating the Incarnate form and then I'd have the extra benefits and then it would be something like you know complete a solo mission with uh this weapon equipped and then you move on to the next challenge and the next challenge might be get 100 kills with the incarnate form of this weapon that their type of thing so that's basically it it tells you how to activate the incarnate mode so direct hits charge the incarnate transmutation and then you press the alt fire button and that's when you activate the incarnate mode it's a little bar in beneath your your crosshair so that is pretty much it for how you get meta weapons in warframe in 2024 Thank you guys for watching. If you liked the video, hit like, subscribe for more Warframe content, and I'll see you guys in the next one.